Hi everybody, this is going to be a series of short videos reminding you how to work out different time durations and time intervals. We're going to look first of all about moving forward in time and then later at looking about going backwards in time. We're going to do some straightforward questions like this and we're going to look at some word problems as well. After each wee video, there will be a few questions for you to have a go at independently. You'll need to have with you a pencil and some paper and you might want to have this Math Learning Centre app open as well to support you with the longer time intervals. Right, we're starting off with a very simple one just so that I can remind you how we're going to use this. Lots of people will already have just sat there and counted on four hours. So they'll have started at 10 and they'll have counted 11, 12, 1, 2. And they will have got to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 p.m. That's exactly what you want to be doing. For all of these activities, all of these questions, we're going to want to be counting on and counting back. And because it's counting on and counting back, a number line is going to be super helpful for us. I'm going to show you with this really simple question, even though most of you can probably do this in your head, just so that we can get familiar with it with an easy question first. Remember, if we're counting on, we're going to be going from left to right. If we count backwards, we go in the other direction. But if we're adding time, we're counting on, we're moving from left to right. So 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd probably go through 12. So I'd add my two hours first, make a note of my 12 o'clock, and then I've still got two hours left to add because there's four hours all together. And that would get me to either 2 p.m. or 1400 hours. And this is 24 hour time here because there's no a.m. or p.m. So this is how I would want to write my answer. Now this um, app is really good because it allows you to have a look at what that actually looks like on an analog clock as well. So if you click on your clock and then click this little button at the bottom here with the sort of dotty arrow going around, what you can do is see the time intervals. I'm just going to move that down a bit. There we go. And if you move towards the green part, then you're moving forwards in time. And if you move towards the red part, you're going backwards in time. So here we're going to move four hours forwards in time. And an hour is going to be a full rotation of the clock from wherever that minute hand started. Now this time it started at 12, it started at the o'clock, but if it was starting at say the quarter past, then a full rotation would be right back round to the quarter past, right back to where it started. Okay, let's have a go. There's one hour, two hours, three hours, whoops, and four hours. Hopefully you can see how the little counter at the top tells you how many hours you've gone, and that agrees with us. Four hours later is 2 p.m. All right, let's have a look at this one. It's a little bit trickier, but it works exactly the same way. What is seven and a half hours later than 13.30? We're half past one in the afternoon. I'm going to get our number line out first of all. And we are counting on, so I'm going to start on the left-hand side with the time that we're at just now, which is 13.30. You might want to write it in both ways if you find one easier than the other. It's also just good practice. Okay, seven and a half hours later. Well, I'm going to do my half hour first because my half hour will easily take me up. It's 30 minutes. And that's going to take me up to two o'clock. Okay, two o'clock. And we can have a quick look on our clock here. If I go half an hour, that's taken me up to two o'clock. Then I'm going to go my seven hours. So two add seven is actually quite an easy one to do in one jump. I'm just going to do it all as one go. And it's going to take me to, yep, you're right, 21, nine o'clock, 9 p.m. 2 add 7 is 9. 14 add 7 is 21. If we look on our clock, we can see that. Now the counter is going to work slightly differently this time because I've already gone half the way round. So what I need to remember is that I'm starting now my 7 hours counting at the O clock. So every time I need to do one whole rotation back round to where my minute hand starts. So 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six, and seven. And we'll be really accurate on the last one. There we go. We've got seven hours, and hopefully you can see as well, we've got this extra half hour in the deep color here. So we've gone seven and a half hours, and we've arrived at 9 p.m., which is the same as our number line suggests. Okay, let's look at this last one together before you go off and have a go by yourselves. It looks quite complicated, this one, because there are sort of exact minutes in it, the 5.47 p.m. time. But actually, it works exactly the same way. You just need to be a little bit more careful with your counting on. So let's get our number line out along the bottom and get started. Right, this time I'm going to do the hours first. So 5.47, okay, and I'm going to add my five hours. I'm not doing anything to the minutes yet, so this is easy. Adding five hours is just going to take us up to 10.47. Five add five is 10. Okay, then I'm going to just write in um, the 24 hour time as well for practice. Then I've dealt with my five hours, I need to deal with my 25 minutes. And people will find lots of different ways for doing this. People might find that it's easiest, I'm just going to change the colour there, that we can see here that we've got 47. So to get to 50, which is then an easier number to work with, we've used three minutes. Now you might find it useful to just keep track of what you've used here. So I've used three minutes already, which means that I'm going to have 22 minutes left. So I'm now at 10.50 and I'm going to jump on 20 minutes from there because that's nice and easy. So 10 minutes would take us to 11 o'clock. Another 10 minutes would take us to 11.10. So I've done my 20 minutes now and I've got two minutes left. And then I've just got those last two minutes to add on the end here. So there's 10, there's 10, and there's the two. And that's going to take us to 11. I oh, can't quite fit it in the corner here, so I'm going to just write it up a bit. That's going to take us to 11, 12, or 23, 12, depending on the clock that we're using. And I can easily check that I've got all of my 25 minutes by just looking down here and checking that that adds up to 25 minutes, which it does. So it's much easier if you can keep track of what you're doing when you're breaking the numbers down in some way that works for you. Let's just have a check on our clock that that agrees with us. So let's move on. First of all, the five hours. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five hours is taking us to 10.47. Yep, that's what we got. And now let's do our 25 minutes. So I'm going to count on one, two, three. Yep, there's our three so far. And then five, 10, 15, 20. So that takes us up to 23. And then one, two that's left. And it takes us to 11, 12 p.m. Hopefully you're now ready to go and have a go at solving your own problems. Remember that you can use this app to help you if you want to be able to visualise the time. And particularly when you get to the ones with the exact minutes, you're very likely to need to use a number line to check your working. Good luck!